So here we are at the last plantation and today we're going to be looking at the things that live in the fresh water. So to do pond dipping we need a nice sturdy tray. If you can get a white one that's better because you can see the invertebrates really clearly then. And you also need a pond net. Now this has got a very fine mesh on it because what we're going to be catching is incredibly tiny. If you do want to have a go at this and you haven't got a pond net, let's face it, not many people do, try a pair of old tights stretched over an old coat hanger. So, you need to get your tray and you need to fill it with water. Just a word, um, don't just go dipping in any pond anywhere. Um, obviously, ponds belong to people and these um, habitats are very finely balanced. So don't go wading in and taking stuff from it just be very very gentle if you've got a pond at home that's ideal for you to go and um, dip in so I'm just going to fill up my tray you don't need a lot of water um, you can sort of half fill the tray and that's fine and then take your net um, when you're dipping in a pond because there's usually a lot of sediment at the bottom don't go mad and drag the net through. What I tend to do is just bounce the net off the bottom of the pond. And I'll do that for about 30 seconds and then stop and empty the net out. Okay, so like I was saying, just bounce the net across the bottom of the pond. Just touch it. You will get this little um, puff of sediment come up. If you can find any weed, Take your net through the weed as well. And just be very careful not to fall in as well. And then after about five seconds, lift it up and have a little look. Sometimes you can see things wiggling around in your net. Yep. Okay, so take your net and invert it over the water and swill it out. Make sure that everything has gone from that net. So just double check you haven't got anything wriggling in your net. Okay so this is a really exciting bit now. We're going to have a look at what we've actually caught. So if we have a look in the tray you can see plenty of stuff moving around and the way it moves tells us what sort of creature it's more likely to be. So it's if we can have a look right over here, just crawling down here, this very long, funny looking thing, almost like a woodlouse. This is a um, water hog. And just here, this massive thing, oh, what a beauty. This one is a damselfly nymph. And if you look really carefully, you can see the three filament tails. And right over here, just in contrast, this fat bodied thing, believe it or not. Oh, and here, just on time, is another one. These are actually dragonfly nymphs. They don't look anything like a dragonfly, but they will go into a dragonfly. And then if we keep looking, oh, just there, this little black thing here. It's a little, whoops, beetle. Okay. And you'll see lots of, oh, just right over here. We've got another dragonfly nymph. And just here, wriggling away, is what we call a blood worm. It's actually a, a fly larvae, a midge larvae that we're looking at. And right in the opposite corner, beetling away, round, around, around, very round bodied, is, you see him just down here, it's actually a water spider. Okay, it's an arachnid, it's got eight legs, and all these things we're going to take back with us and have a look at underneath the microscope. So, before we have a look at the nymphs, I thought we'd take a look at the actual adult form. So, what is the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly? Now, here is a four spot chaser, this is a dragonfly. If you notice, the wings when it's at rest, so it's resting here on this twig, uh, out to the side, okay? It's also a lot bigger than a damselfly. And the eyes on top of the head touch. 
in the middle. And when you watch them flying, they're very, very strong flyers. Here's just a picture of, just to show you about these eyes that meet at the top of the head. The eyes, 85% of the brain is dedicated towards vision. They are incredible predators. 95% of their hunts end in success because of these fantastic, massive compound eyes with over 30,000 lenses in them. So they compute all that information. Very, very efficient hunters. So this is a damselfly. Can you see one of the big differences here is at rest, its wings are held along its body. They are a lot smaller than dragonflies. And the eyes, you can see here, beautiful blue eyes here, aren't touching on the top of their head. They're not as strong flyers as dragonflies. They tend to flutter around a bit more. So now we're going to have a look at the nymphs. So these are the nymphs. This is a typical dragonfly nymph and a typical damselfly nymph. And if you see, they both got antennae, both got these large eyes, just like in the adult form. Six legs, because they're both insects. Segmented abdomens, okay? But the back end of them is very, very different, and the shape is very different as well. And we'll have a look at those in detail under the microscope. Here we are looking at the damselfly nymph. And here, that's a lovely shot of the wing sheets. You can see them folded along the body. And if we look as well, you can see that it's definitely got six legs, so it's definitely an insect. And if you look at those legs, you'll see hairs on them, which help them detect movement from their prey. And at the very end of those legs, can you see those claws? Just fantastic for gripping onto things. That long streamlined body is just fantastic for um, damselfly nymphs to actually live in fast flowing water. And there we are looking down the abdomen and the segments. And these are the caudal lamellae. So that's the gills that it breathes with. And there's another really good shot of those claws on the end of the leg. So we go back up and look at the head and you can see the eyes are dominant on the head. They take up a lot of space. They're very much what they use for um, hunting their prey in the water. And you can also see the little antennae. So now we're looking at the dragonfly nymph. And can you see it's got a much rounder abdomen? And those two little bits at the very end of the abdomen are called the pyramidal anus. It actually breathes through its bottom. So we're looking at the head and very like the damselfly, big eyes, very dominant on the head and the antennae as well to help it find its food. Hairy legs as well, those hairs detecting any movement of prey nearby. But if you look at the end of those legs, the claws aren't as well defined as they are in the damselfly. And there we can just see it beginning to move. There, we're gonna have a look at the mask now. This is a fantastic demonstration of the mouth parts of a dragonfly nymph. And can you see there's this incredible structure here. There's a jaw that actually opens up really, really quickly. And in the pincers, it grabs its prey. It literally takes about 15 microseconds to extend it fully for it to be able to catch its prey. So it catches them with the pincers, pulls it in and then eats it. Now, how does it make this mechanism, this hinged jaw, work so quickly? Well, it's done hydraulically. And the secret is it uses muscles in its abdomen to um, up the hydraulic pressure. And part of the trick with it as well is it actually closes its bottom so that it helps bring up the pressure. What a way to eat. So we're looking at the um, side on view of the dragonfly nymph. The darker bit is its back and as we're coming down here, there, we can quite clearly see its head and underneath, can you see on its chest, it's almost like a triangular extension. This is the mask, this is the extending lower jaw by which it grabs its prey. And you can just at the top of that see its eyes as well. Can you see that dark bit as it moves? This is a view of the underside now of the dragonfly nymph. And if we come down there, there's a lovely clear picture there of the triangular lower jaw. And if you look, you can make out at the front a straight line. That's the edge of the jaw. And if you follow that along, you should be able to just work out where the two pincers are that on either side of that jaw. Just absolutely amazing. 
So this is a water mite. See how tiny it is now. I'm going to have a hard job catching up with it. Very like a spider. Two body parts, eight legs, usually a hairy body as well. They suck the juices out of their prey. So we're looking at the water hog louse here. Um, if you have a look, it has six pairs of legs. Quite hard to count really when it's moving like this. And at the front of its body, it actually has two pairs of antennae. Now this very strange looking creature actually is a very caring parent because the females carry her eggs around in a pouch underneath her first two legs. And when these hatch out, she actually carries her young round still in the pouch between her first two legs. Now, they're benthic. That means that they are um, they live at the bottom of ponds and streams. And they're very good at surviving in low oxygen conditions. Um, they're also what we call a detritivore. That means they're cleaning up all the dead vegetation at the bottom of ponds. So they're really, really good little creature to have around in your pond. So now we've had a really good look at the stuff, we need to take it back to its habitat. We need to make sure that um, it's safe. it's not going to survive. They, these things you can't take home and look out after in a fish tank or anything like that. They need it to be in their habitat. So when we empty out the tray, we're going to be very gentle because we've seen how tiny they are. We're just going to very gently tip the tray out. There we go. And Pull it around and double check there's nothing still in the tray. There we go.